In this video, we're going to look at line work code sets. We're going to open a line work code set and discuss the parameters inside of that code set. And then we're going to compare those codes to a survey data set to see how the codes are read inside of that survey data set. So when we set our survey user settings, we directed Civil 3D to look to a specific file that contained our equipment databases, our figure prefix databases, and our line work code sets. So if that was set up correctly, what Civil 3D is going to do now is it's going to populate a already created line work code set for you called Essentials. If you were working inside of Civil 3D, not as part of these video sets, uh, what you would have to do inside of Civil 3D first would be to set up a line work code set unless where you're working has line work code sets specified and has a location for you to direct Civil 3D to. So if you need to create a new line work code set, what you're going to go ahead and do is right click on line work code sets and select new. Since we already have a line work code set, we're going to go ahead and go to essentials and we're going to right click and select edit. So inside of this window is the edit line work code sets window. And we are basically setting our codes for how Civil 3D is going to look at the field data inside of a survey database. So we're going to go and look down the list, starting with coding methods. What this is basically saying is that after your point identifier, what it, how is Civil 3D going to tell when your field codes start? And so you'll have a point description of, say, GS for ground shot. And then if there's a space, Civil 3D is going to see that space and it's going to say, this is the beginning of the field codes. And so the field code escape is kind of the opposite of that. It's saying, once I've started reading these field codes, when do I decide that I'm done reading that field code? And I switch over to comments. And so a slash would say, I'm going to stop reading those field codes. I'll continue to the end of the line, but I won't implement any more text inside of this field code. Start in comments mode is basically flipping how Civil 3D reads everything. When you get to your field codes, it will start in comment mode and it will wait until it sees that field code escape. And it, once it sees that field code escape, it will switch over to reading the field codes and implementing them into the drawing. An automatic begin on figure prefix match basically looks to your figure prefix database and says, do I have a code that matches this figure prefix database? If it does, I'm going to start a figure on it. Otherwise, it won't start a figure and it'll look to your rest of your code sets. If you don't have this checked, basically what you have to do is you have to always, when you want to create a figure, use your begin command for that figure. So moving on, now we have our special codes for how to dictate what's going to happen with these figures. So we have begin, which begins a figure, continue, would continue a figure, end, would end that figure, close, basically takes the point that you're on and loops back to the beginning. Horizontal offset and vertical offsets are creating offsets, whether it's horizontal or vertical, and then stop as offsets stops those offsets. Uh, then we have our line segment codes. We can recall to a specific point, connect to a specific point, create a rectangle on the point that we're reading currently, make a right turn based on where we are at currently and an extension to there. If you use a negative number, it would be a left turn. And then you can also choose to extend a line past a point by using the extend command. And then we have our curve settings, which are begin curve, end curve, creating a circle on the point that we're at, and then specifying whether a point is on a curve versus a beginning or an end of a curve. The most common ones that I see used in my day-to-day -day work is begin and end curve, and then also begin code, end code, and close. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open up a survey data set, and we can see how these code sets are implemented. So if we look at this code set or our survey data, uh, you'll see point 306 is a building noted by the BLD, and it begins it. It draws that building from 306 all the way until we get to 309, and then it finds the CLS command for close, and it loops back and will create a closed shape from 306 to 309. Then we move on to 310, and you will see that it begins a SWL, which is swale, and it creates a swale from 310 all the way to 333, and then ends it. So we will not loop back to 310, we will just stop at 333 and start a new code at 334 and a begin a new swale moving on until we get to 341. If we navigate all the way up to the top of our survey data set, what you'll see is we're now working with an edge of pavement and you'll see 
begin of that edge of pavement, moving on to the beginning of a curve of that edge of pavement, moving on until we get to the end of that segment and the end of that curve. So what Civil 3D does is it starts with a begin, it continues reading until it finds that end, and if it encounters another code in between, it starts that code. So we would have a linear segment beginning, and then we would have a beginning of a curve, and then we would have an end of the entire segment code and move on to a new code for a figure.